Good morning, everyone. Today we are examining some lessons from Jeremiah chapter 7. And as we've talked about yesterday, as we entered into the reading of this particular chapter, uh, chapter 7 is going to be the start of a new message uh, from Jeremiah, a, a new revelation that God is going to have him give to the people. And this one is very much going to be about the uh, the reasons and the problems that things uh, that are taking place in Jerusalem and the reason why this judgment is coming and even more details in a different direction than what we've seen in chapters 3 through 6 with the previous message. And so I want to delve into a few of the things that God talks about through Jeremiah here in this particular chapter. And there's going to be a lot of things that we could talk about and a lot of areas I'd like to camp out, uh, but we're just going to pick out maybe three of those this morning. The first one is found in verse number four, as he is giving this introductory statement uh, in verses two through four, he talks about the need for them to hear the word of the Lord, uh, all of all Jerusalem and uh, Judah. And then he says, do not trust in these lying words, verse 4, saying the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. It is a warning that there are those who all they care about is the fact that they have the temple of the Lord. And that as long as they have the temple of the Lord, then nothing can happen to them. Nothing is going to go wrong. You know, these are the people that believe in God, but, but they believe that they are going to be protected because they have the temple of the Lord. It is very much the same mentality that you see in the books of, uh, in the book of First Samuel, uh, where you have the people who believe that because they have the Ark of the Covenant, that they cannot be defeated, and that nothing bad will ever happen to them because they have the Ark of the Covenant which they believe wholeheartedly until because of their sin and transgression they are defeated in battle and the Philistines take the Ark of the Covenant from them. Well, you have those in the day of Jeremiah who believe that because Jerusalem is the home of the temple of the Lord, Solomon's temple, because of its beauty and its grandeur and because of, of the fact that that is God's home, nothing is going to happen to them that God will not allow anything to happen to him uh, to them because that's where his temple is. And Jeremiah says that's a lie and don't believe in that particular type of mentality. Later on in the chapter, uh, as you come down to verse number 12, God tells them to learn from history. He says, go now to my place, which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it because of the wickedness of my people Israel. And now, because you have done all these works, says the Lord, and I spoke to you, rising up early and speaking, but you did not hear, and I called you, but you did not answer. Therefore, I will do to the house which is called by my name, in which you trust, and to this place which I gave to you and your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. And I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all your brethren, the whole posterity of Ephraim. Here in verses 12 through 15, God says, you should pay attention to what happens to Israel. Because remember, Israel went into captivity a hundred years ago. Israel went into captivity a century beforehand because of her wickedness, because of her indifference, because of her inability and unwillingness to hear and to repent from her ways. And yet God says, you think you're going to be different. He said, you need to learn the lesson from Shiloh and from Ephraim. Ephraim is the, the code word in the Old Testament for the people of the northern kingdom. He says, my place was in Shiloh long before it was in Jerusalem. And yes, there were many uh, years where the house of the Lord, the tabernacle, rested in Shiloh. And yet that did not protect the northern kingdom of Israel. 
Israel will still be sent into captivity because it's not based upon a location that God is going to protect. It is based upon the obedience of his people. And so God says, yes, don't trust in the lies, but also learn from your history. Then he says in verses 16 and 17, Therefore do not pray for this people, nor lift up a cry or prayer for them, nor make intercession to me, for I will not hear you. Do you not see what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? God says there is a time for prayer, and there is a time where our prayers will not help. He says don't bother praying at this point in time for this people or for me to or for to make intercession to me because I will not hear you because the hearts of the people haven't changed the actions of the people have not changed and God in his judgment will not change you know there's something to be said for when we cannot pray or when our prayers will not accomplish what we hope they will we can pray for somebody to be saved all we want to but until that person actually takes the steps that are necessary and is obedient to the gospel of Christ that prayer will not be answered God is not going to change things just on the whim of what we want especially when we're praying about someone and for someone who is not willing to take care of things themselves and is not willing to change and is not willing to get their life and their heart right in the sight of God. There are times where prayer will not do any good. But then the last thing I want us to look at this morning is verses 31 and 32 of chapter 7 where there you have some statements made that I want to just pull into a frame of reference. In verse 31 he says, And they have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire which I did not command, nor did it come into my heart. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when it will be no more called Tophet, or the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. For they will bury in Tophet until there is no room. The corpses of this people will be food for the birds of heaven and for the beasts of the earth, and no one will frighten them away. Here he talks about the high places that they have built in Tophet. High places in the Old Testament means a place of worship, most of the time to an idol. And so they have built this high place of Tophet in the valley of the son of Hinnom. And in that worship area, to an idolatrous God, they burn their sons and their daughters in the fire. Literally, they burn them alive as human sacrifices to these idolatrous gods. And God says, this is something which I did not command and which has never come into my heart. This is not something I ever wanted, not something I would ever accept. They are sacrificing their own children alive to an idolatrous God. He says this place will become the valley of slaughter. It will become a burial ground. It will become a refuse place. They will bury in Tophet until there is no room. The corpses of the people will be food for the birds and the beasts, and no one will frighten them away. The Valley of Hinnom is going to go from being a place of slot or a place of of sacrifice to an idolatrous god to being a place of corpses. Now the one thing I want you to notice and the one thing I want you to remember about that is that when it comes to the time of the New Testament in Greek this particular valley has a different name. In the Old Testament, it is the Valley of the Son of Hinnom. In the New Testament, it is known as Gehenna, which is translated, especially in the earlier translations, as hell. The Valley of Hinnom is going to be the picture of destruction 
and desolation that Jesus is going to use as the picture of eternal torment. Those are some of the things that I pulled out of Jeremiah chapter 7 that I think are valuable to us. I know that there's other things we could have talked about this morning, but I hope these things will be beneficial to you, and I hope you have a great day.